Hi there, and uh, welcome to Ginger Man Editorial. Uh, my name is Eric. I am, well, I am Ginger Man Editorial. And uh, tonight I want to talk just a little bit about my editorial philosophy. First, though, let me apologize for the kind of crappy quality of the lighting here. I work out of my little dungeon basement office for the most part. And, well, like most basements, the lighting is uh, not the best. I've tried to play around with it, and I kind of have... I can't find a happy medium between this and just glaring light on everything. So I opted for a little bit darker and hope it's a little bit less distracting. Uh, hopefully I can get a better camera at some point or figure out a way to, uh, you know, find that happy medium with the lighting. In any case, um, on to the editorial philosophy. Well, uh, you know, like any editor, of course, I'm looking for plots that make sense, uh, you know, good sentence structure that flows well, uh, characters that behave uh, that behave reasonably within the confines of the plot and, of course, are interesting. Um, by within the confines of the plot, I mean, is it internally consistent? Uh, this is something that a lot of readers or viewers, in the case of movies, can get hung up on a lot. Uh, you know, people will watch a sci-fi or a fantasy film and be like that can't happen in real life well no kidding uh no big shock there if your main character is a person who is bit by a radioactive or genetically altered spider if you prefer and can now shoot webbing out of his hands and stick to walls and whatnot yeah no kidding that can't happen in the real world uh no shocker there uh but that is the kind of the central thing that is the ground part of the groundwork of your story uh so things have to work consistently within that and maybe someday i'll go off on some movies and whatnot has examples of how to completely mess that up because there are some sci-fi movies and whatnot that completely make no sense uh from an internal consistency standpoint uh, but for another day. Um, in any case, that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Uh, that things just make sense within the rules that you, as the creator, set. If something does take place in the real world, then I'm, of course, going to be, you know, looking for things working the way they they more or less do in the real world. That's not to say that uh, every character should fit within a certain box you know like well this is your uh troubled teenager character and therefore uh they have to wear skinny jeans and um paint their fingernails black and so on and so forth and he, no 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 uh no st doesn't have to be stereotypes uh but you know just if they have problems well what kind of problems do they have how do they deal, you know, do they deal with them in a believable fashion? And if it does seem like they're over the top, okay, well, then explain explain through the story why it is or why the over-the-top reactions and whatnot of a given character are justified. Um, you know, you can't just, you can't just have a random, weird, uh, crazy character who's random and weird and crazy for no good reason. <laughs> Anime. Um... Anyway, uh, moving on from that. Uh, otherwise, generally when I look at a story or, you know, any other work that I'm given, because I don't just do fiction work, I've worked on a number of nonfiction projects uh, from, uh, from Christian devotionals to one of the one that I just got hired for is I'm going to be working on something that looks at the structure of different uh, business organizations. And... I'm not sure when that's going to be coming out. I'm, I, I just got the uh, first half of the book from, uh, from the author, and I'll be starting in on that within the next couple of days. Um, point is, I work in all kinds of different genres, and all of my philosophy is always to help you, the author, get, get your point, get your story across in the best way possible. Uh, my approach is definitely scalpel not sledgehammer any t if i can avoid bringing up the hammer i'm going to uh i'm not going to be merciless with a lot with a lot of rules you know uh, the one that 
gets a lot of attention these days, you know, when I'm looking on Twitter and everything, is adverbs. Everybody hates adverbs, or they love them. Uh, there are some people that are trying to be like, okay, look, adverbs are the, their words. Chill out. We don't have to cut them out of every single story. And, you know, they have their place. Limited, yes, but there's a place for them. Um, personally, I feel kind of the same way about passive voice, you know, describing your words, you know, so-and-so was walking to the, was walking to the store and was looking around at the scenery and so on and so forth. Um, I don't have a huge problem with that. I don't, you know, I, I, I've even read a few editorial, uh, you know, guidebooks and like well look at the difference between this you know it'll give a sense like that with lots of uh, ing words and they'll change it to um you know he walked to the store and looked at the trees and and the flowers and like eh, okay yeah they're different i'm not strongly moved one way or the other i th do think the active voice is perhaps a touch better sounding overall but it depends on what you want to convey. Um, passive voice is, the, the passive voice is much more uh, useful, I think, if you're trying to convey something that's still happening within the, within the story, for one. I don't know. Um, but that's me personally. Uh, others, uh, others clearly feel differently, are, are utterly merciless in how they will go about editing that. Um, I'm a little bit more judicious in my approach, and so long as it works within your story, I say go for it. Um, other than that, uh, you know, like I said, uh, so I, I like small changes whenever I can. Uh, when I'm doing a beta read, I pretty much just go through the big things. I make sure that that plot doesn't, you know, make sure the plot works. Make sure your characters are acting uh, logically with within the confines of everything. Making sure that they, if they're shown as knowing something, um, well, make sure that it's logical that they know it. Uh, that the knowledge doesn't just seem to be infused into them and all of a sudden they can uh, fly a helicopter. Unless you're a trinity in the Matrix, that doesn't work. Um, you know, there's got to be, you know, there's got to be explanations for certain things or at least implied explanations. Not everything has to be spelled out either. Um, you know, when I get more into a full editing thing, uh, yeah, I'll get then into the weeds with sentence structure and everything and making sure that things flow, sentences go along at a good clip. You're not going into run-ons and all of that sort of thing. And I won't just tell you, this is wrong, fix it. No. Um, I'll offer suggestions. And with the full understanding that they are suggestions. Um, you know, some people might not like that and by all means uh should you hire me for anything if you're like no nope, just tell me what you think is wrong please don't offer any suggestions if because for whatever reason you want to work on yourself that's fine um i'll just i'll highlight away and be like okay this i don't like this and you know i'll tell you why but if you don't want the suggestions i won't give them but i am also more than happy to provide uh you know some just helpful suggestions re I'll rewrite the sentence put it in the comments off to the side and do with it what you will uh, my feelings aren't hurt one way or another uh, I also when it comes to the overall criticism whether it's a beta read or full-on editing I will be honest with you I don't I don't always give my clients good news uh, sometimes I've been known to give them very bad news uh, you know, like, you've got to go back and completely fix this thing. Um, I could give you examples, but I won't out of respect for the client. Um, or clients, I should say. Um, this, you know, it's just something that happens. It's part of the process. But I don't, I don't just, even, you know, you know even with a work that I don't think is ready, I'm not just going to tell you, you know, this is bad, it's not ready, uh, don't, you, you know, come come back to me when you're ready for the big time, kid. Uh, no, I always try to provide constructive criticism that will help you, that, that will help you fix the problems that I see. Uh, you know, if, you're, if your characters 
just seem to be moving from scene to scene with no real investment well then you've got a problem with your main character your main character isn't engaging your main character isn't isn't somebody who's actually engaged in and affecting the plot the main character is just sort of being moved along by the plot then and i'll offer suggestions on how to fix it depending on the story um and you know that that i think is really key to how i go about things because i've never had a client come back and go and tell me that you know i was too mean i was too harsh if anything um i've always gotten good reviews and people appreciating the constructive criticism that I offer. Uh, and don't worry, I don't just offer the criticism. I will also point out, you know, places, you know, places where you do well. And I've always been able to find that uh, in just about any work, nonfiction or fiction, um, the craziest fantasy story you can possibly imagine. You know, even the, even the works that I have liked editing or reviewing the least, I have been able to go and say, hey, you know, you did really good here. Your imagination is really great with the way you've built this world or this, you know, this magic system is intriguing, so on and so forth. And, you know, work on developing that. It's a strong point. Build on it. Um, so that's, I think, basically a good base layout of my editorial philosophy. I want... I want your voice to come through in the best possible way. I'm not interested in uh, rewriting your your book for you, uh, unless for some reason that's you know that's what you would like. <laughs> then then I provide that as well. Uh, but when it comes to editing, it's your voice that matters. It's your say at the end of the day that determines what goes what goes into the book, what doesn't. Uh, I try to be available to answer questions about to clarify any comments that I might have made just so that you know you, you know you can you can understand fully whatever criticisms or praises I might have for you any whatever suggestions I might have and you know then you can actually make an informed decision about whether or not to uh, accept what I offer or kick it to the curb um, and yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, scalpel, not a hammer. And if you are interested in hiring me as an editor, um, I am available either here. You can hire me through PayPal, uh, here on the website. Just feel free to contact me. It'll go right into my uh, email, which I check pretty darn frequently. And, or if you aren't quite comfortable working with PayPal and you'd rather work with through some other service, I am available on Fiverr or Upwork as well. Uh, whichever way you want to go. Uh, the one thing I will say is uh, straight through here uh, using PayPal, it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, as of right now, my, uh, my full-on editing rates are basically, um, what was it? Ah uh, yes, a do basically a, a dollar a page or a dollar every uh, five hundred words, so you know, pretty cheap, can't beat it. <laughs> and uh, on that note, I think it is time to uh, wrap up this video. And until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>